this lesson, we're going to take a look at some more advanced ways to use masking in Pro Show Producer. In this first example, we can see that the subject in the photo has a spotlight on her. As the slide begins, the light opens up to reveal the entire image. Let's walk through making this effect. First, double click on the slide to open up the slide options. What we need to create this effect is a mask that allows us to blend images together, so we'll be using a grayscale mask. In the Layers List toolbar, click the plus icon to add a new layer. And let's choose Add Solid Color. Remember, the general rule of masking is that light reveals and dark conceals. For this effect, I'll need a color that clearly shows me light and dark areas, so I'm going to use white. Next, I'm going to make a few changes to this solid color layer. First, in the preview, I'm going to click the layer and use my mouse wheel to resize it. Let's also rotate the layer and reposition it so that it covers our model's face. Since her head is tilted, my goal is to move this layer and try to match that angle. When the mask is all set, this should help it blend much better with the light in the picture. Now that I have it lined up, let's go ahead and turn on the mask option and select grayscale. When I click on the photo under the mask, you can see how the mask reveals just her face. You can also see that this big rectangle is not a very attractive addition to the slide. So let's adjust the shape of this mask. Click the Adjustments tab right above the preview. With the mask layer selected, in the Editing Tools area, choose the Vignette option. For the vignette type, let's change the shape to ellipse. Let's also change the size to about 80%. When I click on the underlying layer again, I can see that my mask is not only more round, but it also gradually blends the image, creating this spotlight effect. To polish it up, let's go back to the Layer Settings tab, select the mask layer, and adjust the size and position until it looks just right. To recreate what we saw in the original sample, let's add a little bit of motion. Click on the Effects tab above the preview. With the mask layer selected, click on Keyframe 2, then simply move the zoom slider all the way to the right. As you can see, there aren't any exact settings for this type of effect, so don't worry if it takes a little trial and error to recreate this with your photos. Let's take a look at another example. In this slide, I'm using an effect from Style Pack 5 called Paired Lineup 3. The creative use of masking in the background really helps the photos in the foreground stand out. Let's take another look at this effect, only this time we'll focus on the background. When we open up the slide options, we can see in the layers list that this effect uses masks to cover two different images that have been adjusted with some blur. In the preview, if we right click and select Show Motion Path, we can easily see that each of these layers moves just a little differently. When all of the layer motion combines with the blur adjustments, it helps create this abstract plasma effect. Let's quickly make something similar. I've already added an image to my show, so now I'll go to Slide Options, and then go to the Adjustments tab. Let's add about 50% blur. Now let's click on the Layer Settings tab and create a masking layer. In the Layers list, click the plus icon and choose Add Gradient. What we want to create is an abstract mask to go above our image layer. So in the Presets, choose Masks from the drop-down list. Now, over in the Type area, select Plasma. Back in the Presets area, you'll notice that the masks look much different now. I'm going to try this one. I think this looks pretty good, but if I want to change the pattern, I can adjust the color stays here. Plus, I can also click the Random button to create a new Plasma pattern. Click OK to add the Gradient layer. Then, enable it as a mask, and then choose either one of the grayscale options. Next, let's go to the Effects tab and add some motion. Let's start with Layer 2. 
For the first keyframe, let's have the layers start all the way at the bottom and off the screen. If you need help seeing where the layer is located, use the Canvas Size Adjuster at the bottom of the Slide Options window. Now, click Keyframe 2 and set the layer so that it goes all the way up and off the screen at the top. For Layer 1, we want two things to happen. First, we want to make sure that the zoom is set so that the mask always covers the entire slide, even when we add motion. In this case, I'll set the zoom to 200% for both keyframes. The second thing we want is to see the mask go in the opposite direction of Layer 2. Since my image layer moves from bottom up, I want this mask layer to go from the top down. So in keyframe 1, let's drag this up to the top. And for keyframe 2, let's drag it down to the bottom. This doesn't have to be straight up and down motion. In fact, when you preview the slide, you may find that panning or rotating your mask will help you make your effect look more interesting.